with Landon Reynolds. Is that how you say it? Yes, sir. Reynolds. Okay. It's a pretty easy one. You know, sometimes you get really off names and you kind of have to <laughs> shoot it. But how are you today, man? Man, I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me on, great. man. So, 100%. I'm pumped. And for any of you listening, this is conversations. And that's literally what we're doing. Every week we have a conversation with somebody, whether they're a pastor, whether they don't believe in God, and they're just an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter. Uh, I believe that. Um, we need to have more conversations, more than ever right now. I feel like we're not having conversations. So I'm, I'm pleased to have you on, man. So Thanks. just jumping, jumping right in, talk, talk to me a little bit about who you are. Maybe share uh, your story, kind of what got you here. Um, I, I'm, I'm pumped to learn about you. Yeah, man. Well, I, I uh, like I said, appreciate you having me on, dude. And, uh, but, man, I, I'm, I live in uh, East Tennessee. And so uh, I'm Let's sure go. some of your listeners will be able to pick up on that accent pretty quick. <laughs> um, but I live in East Tennessee. I'm born and raised in East Tennessee. Uh, I serve. Um, I serve currently at a church called Foothills Church, and um, and we are a, we're a, we're a church plant of about 14 years ago. So I've been been on staff mm. coming up on nine years. It's a great church. Wow, um, love getting to be a part of it. Got to, I get to work with uh, my youth pastor. Uh, who was my youth pastor, and now he's my lead pastor, and uh, and so I oversee at our church um, our 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 communications. You know, I know it's ministry, but you know, kind of like the marketing world, mm-hmm. um, and yep. uh, and then I also oversee uh, uh, several other things. But the the brunt of my job is is really uh, my title is experienced pastor. So I uh, mm-hmm. I try to I oversee the experience from when you see our logo on the street to when you take a seat. Uh, so that's kind of mm-hmm. street to seat. It's kind of my my place. And so, yeah, I was a youth pastor, family pastor, what we call next gen pastor here um, for um, for about uh, seven to eight years. And then the past, you know, two ish mm-hmm. years, I've been serving in this role. And so, yeah, born and raised in East Tennessee, man. I also run a business called uh, Simply Strategic Ministry. And so, um, it's mm-hmm. a it's it's basically a coaching company. And uh, so we we work with coaching. Uh, ministry leaders on um, on like the practical side of ministry. Uh, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. teach great theology, and uh, so we kind of geek out on the practical, man. But dude, I, yeah. I love what I get to do. I love I get to serve the church. I get to mm-hmm. have my own business, and then uh, and then uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a good a good phase of life as well. I got three little kids, so I'm very tired uh, at all times. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's. A, it's a good, crazy season of life, um, and I, mm-hmm. I feel so stinking blessed. I get to do what I get to do, so it's awesome. Yeah, well, that's that's exciting. I think we have a lot to to, to go in there. Aside from the business side, to I yeah. just want to say, number one, how incredible are you for being planted for nine years in one house? That is yeah. not normal in 2023. So, talk, I, told, I mean, I told my pastor. I told my pastor the other day, uh, we were talking about it and I was like, listen, I was like, cause you know, I am very much a, a new idea guy, you know, um, uh, mm-hmm. I'm an Enneagram three. So like I yep. want to achieve, I want to build, I got, you know, new ideas every morning. Um, and so we were mm-hmm. kind of talking, I was like, listen, you know, I, I jump, I can jump from thing to thing and be very happy with new projects. I said, but my greatest accomplishment, uh, and I was telling him my greatest accomplishment is that I've got to be here at Foothills Church for nine years, and uh, it's I love it. And it's great because the church I grew up in actually planted this church. So, um, yeah. though I wasn't here when we planted, I was still at the the other church, Grace. Um, mm-hmm. You know, getting able to see it. I mean, it's just few people get to watch it from infancy all the way to really a mature multi site church now. Um, and mm-hmm. so, it's such a cool experience, honestly. What What do you think that is? Like, what do you think are the one to two ingredients of staying planted in basically one house, the house planted the next one. Yeah. So what do you feel like that is? Yeah. So I think like, um, I think first off is you got to really believe in it, you know, because if you're going to be somewhere mm-hmm. for nine years, you're going to see the good, the bad and the ugly. And, uh, one thing I love about our, our church's mission, um, is our church's mission statement is very simple. It's make disciples. Mm-hmm. And so for me, as someone who like, like I love when we have you know, vision, visionaries and, and, you know, they come up with these statements and they're, they're great and I have nothing against them. What I love though is like our pastor's vision is not our pastor's vision. Our pastor's vision comes mm-hmm. straight from the Great Commission and to go and make disciples. Right. So for me, when, you know, 
time can be difficult or when, you know, I'm not in like the best season of ministry in my life. Like I can always go back to, all right, I have been given a mission and that mission does not change. And our church Mm -hmm. ultimately is aligned with that mission. And so uh, I love getting to serve a church that's just like, hey, we're just going to do exactly the words of Jesus. And uh, Mm -hmm. and so for me, that's kind of number one thing. And then uh, I think, too, um, you know, I think, too, just being um, like being really like self-motivated too. like like nobody has Mm -hmm. to tell me like set goals for me. Um, and so like I can stay right. planted and always have a new challenge because I'm driving myself at the end of the day. Sure. I have, mm-hmm. I have leaders who are pushing me, uh, and, and direct reports, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, I can be very, I can be very satisfied creating my own goal and then trying to mm-hmm. achieve it. And, uh, when you're finding yeah. that satisfaction in those things, and we've had a lot of ups and downs, uh, personally, um, and mm-hmm. and not really related to like leadership issues at the church or anything, but just like seasons of ministry where we we've, we've kind of been through it. And just to kind of have that dexterity. I just encourage people like don't stay eighteen months. Like try to stay planted mm-hmm. as long as you can because uh, we got to graduate our sixth graders all the way through the, our youth ministry. And uh, for mm-hmm. me, that's a gosh, uh, it's so it's cool a big to deal. be able to look back on it. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, for for me, I think it's a predetermined decision, right? Like Mm -hmm. before we said yes to something, we thought about everything that we're going into. It wasn't just like uh, emotional decision because a lot of times that's what happens. You just make an emotional decision and then three months in you're offended because, right, the pastor doesn't text you back because he's at dinner with his wife and you're like, oh, they don't care. And it's like we cannot get in those rabbit holes because it's like I'm I'm called here with you or without you. I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Yeah, and if you um, so get your feelings hurt, hurt if you no, get your feelings hurt easy, like you're gonna struggle to stay planted. Like holy you gotta smokes. have that dexterity to where your your like calling is not dependent upon your boss's like in whatever season. Mm-hmm. Like what the way your boss treats you in a season, uh, whether it's because a lot of times it's just preference. It's like you prefer to be treated like this. Right. And then you're like, Oh, what was me? It's like, all right, let's Let's toughen up a little bit and uh, let's, <laughs> let's stick it, stick around and, and get a hobby and uh, don't right. find your identity in this thing. A hundred percent. You 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 have a couple hobbies, right? You're are you into jujitsu? Yeah, man. So I am a lifelong martial artist since age four. Let's so go. Uh, I have wow. I have ministry, martial arts, and uh, and then I have simply strategic ministry. Uh, which is our uh, our business, and so we, my mm-hmm. family we we run a uh, an academy um, of I, I fought professionally in the karate world, um, and wow. so uh, so I've traveled all of the nation fighting. Um, was one of the top five super lightweights at one point in time, and uh, and now I do jujitsu and kickbox, and I teach still, and so uh, I always say. I always say, I think I heard Jocko Willink say something like this: It's hard to get stressed out about your job when somebody's trying to choke you, um, and so <laughs> right. like. To be able to disconnect and uh, and mm-hmm. show up and, and 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 throw down a little bit, I, I'm a big fan. So yeah, I got I got those hobbies. Yeah. Well, two things with that. Number one, I don't think you'll probably need a VIP security when you preach, right? <laughs> I, yeah, we'll see. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. And two, but seriously though, I think I think health and like a yeah. hobby kind of go coexist with ministry. What do you? What have you found? even coaching other pastors or leaders, um, like the, the benefits of having a hobby and even being healthy, like yeah. we talk about all the time, drink, drinking water and watching what you're eating, like the importance of all of that. Yeah. I think a lot of times we focus on like, like our, our physical health in terms of like appearance. And, mm. and for me, like, yeah, I want to look good. Like, yeah, I want to look healthy and, and you know, like any, any guy, you know, wants to, you know, be presentable right. and look well. Um, but like for me, um, I just challenge people to like, like figure out what is going to de-stress you figure out because, you know, what well, it says, guard your heart for the wellspring of life. Like for me, mm-hmm. I, my workout, so I, my workout is I go to the sauna. I love the sauna. 
and I do I do like 200 push-ups in the sauna. I do my sit-ups. I do my like. And for me, though, I could probably get like a harder workout if I'm doing like CrossFit or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's still a hard workout. Like I can get like more muscles work. For me, I come right. out of there and I feel so good. And so like I like I, I feel completely refreshed. And so I, I feel like there's a lot of people who who they they treat they treat their hobbies or they treat their workout routine as an escape and they don't mm. treat it as healing. And so those are the places I go. Honestly, I go to heal. I go there and I, I mean, I listen to scripture. I'll listen to my sermons, uh, not my sermons. I'll listen to a sermon. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Uh, I'll listen to a sermon. And uh, for me, those are not the places where I just escape, even though it is good to escape. Mm-hmm. It is good to step into environments that you're not having to always be on, if you will. Uh, right. But dude, I just love like, like I come out, I come out of the the hot sauna, and I just feel like I'm so much more focused, and I have, I feel like I'm so mm-hmm. much more like in tune with the Holy Spirit, and uh, for me, that just is is game changing. So I'm like, yeah, having a have a hobby, but an escape quickly becomes an addiction. So it's got to mm-hmm. be something that's actually healing you, and not just right. getting you away. Because you know, you could work out 15 hours a week, and quickly fall into an affair you know you know for me i i when i work out i'm not like there just to look better even though that's a byproduct i want to Mm -hmm. i want to make sure that i'm there to to work on who god's making me uh not necessarily just who i want to you know who i want to appear like Hmm. so good yeah i love i love just having conversation with leaders about discipline because i think that's truly what um, is a distinction between like an okay leader and a great leader is, and it's funny is we hear that a thousand times a day. You go on social media, there's some like motivational quote about leadership and you're like, yeah, but the reality is it's truly the distinction. And I always, yeah. I always want to ask no matter who is on this podcast, but talk me through maybe your daily rhythm. If you have one or your weekly rhythm, cause yeah. I know you're disciplined. I know you wake up early. I see your Instagram mm-hmm. stories. Uh, <laughs> I, I just love, I love hearing about people's schedules. Yeah. So I am not naturally an early morning person. Like that's not like my, my bent. Now I am a mm-hmm. natural, like if I watch a movie past eight o'clock, I will fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so for me, uh, so I do this thing on my social media, and you've seen it before. Uh, I post I post a picture of my coffee mug at 4.30 a.m. And honestly, mm-hmm. I share this with people at my church. Honestly, the only reason I do that is because it's like reverse engineered my dopamine because I wake up and I want to get on social media because I'm addicted mm-hmm. to my phone. And so I'm like, All right, I'm going <laughs> to try to reverse engineer this craving that I already have, post it, and then put it away. And it helps me like stay accountable because I have like people mm-hmm. who are like, like on this same kind of journey with me. Um, and so when you, you kind of made mention of that, I wanted to kind of share that, but yeah, so my, my rhythm is, uh, I work, you know, I try to, I try to stay, you know, I try to get my most important stuff done, you know, before 11 o'clock. Cause I can, mm-hmm. I'm good in meetings. Like second half of the day, I try to stay away from meetings in the morning. So I wake up 4 30 AM. I try to go to bed the night before somewhere between nine and 10. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I like nine thirty is the sweet spot for me. Uh, we put our kids to bed early, and so I wake up that next morning. You know, I, I try to go four thirty to five thirty ish. Wake up, I you know I always try to confess sin, read my Bible, and pray. Those are my three things, kind of my mm-hmm. three step process. And then I usually journal like three or four lines, uh, like not much. And uh, and then from there, I am uh, I pivot to I open Asana, which is my task list. Uh, and mm-hmm. is my project management app, and uh, and then I set my my top three priorities for the day, um, and and then I and then I start going, uh, and I always do my my workout. I try to do it at lunch. I call it my second win workout because I you know <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen the quote by a guy named Alex Ramos. He's like uh, he's like uh, two things that uh, make you two things that make you better uh, in the afternoon: a workout and a nap. But only one makes you jack. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, <laughs> right. like, you know, I could take a nap at one o'clock or if I hop in a workout or if I do a 45 minute sauna mm-hmm. workout, like I'm, I'm like completely refreshed and then I have enough oh, energy, yeah. but then the kids go to bed and I'm shocked. Like I'm mm-hmm. not going to get any work done at night. I'm going to watch a law and order and fall asleep with some Ben and Jerry's in my hand. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. Right. At night. Uh, so I got to go to sleep early, but, 
Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my that's kind of my routine, my habit. Um, I mm-hmm. stay super deep in uh, my project management apps. Uh, so I, I'm I'm deep into you know building a second brain out and um, you mm-hmm. know to to keep me on track. And then like that 4:30 a.m. though, like I am a hundred percent a different person when I do that. I actually have more energy when I have less sleep a lot of times. Uh, because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm just more focused to get it done as opposed to just like waking up at 8.30, rolling out of bed, getting to work a little bit late. For me, it mm-hmm. just keeps me motivated. I know not everybody's like that, um, but that's my that's my grind. You offended two types of people. Probably the same person, but two different <laughs> ways right there. Project management, like an mm-hmm. actual system behind everything they're doing. They're, somebody's freaking out about that. And just waking up early, they're like, ah, I yeah. can't do that. I can't. I can't do it. And I, I would say, it took me a, a while to make the decision of waking up early. Yep. Like I, like yep. you said, I am not naturally like I wake up at four twenty because I got to get to the gym at four thirty in my apartment mm-hmm. complex. <laughs> I don't. I don't want. I don't want to most of the time. Sometimes yeah. it's like, but when I do, the second I put my feet on the ground, I'm ready to rock. Like it's because you're waking yep. up on a mission. Like it's. And I think mm-hmm. you're talking about Enneagram 3. Yeah, I mean, for 16 minutes, I've heard Enneagram 3, so I love it. Um, I'm an 8-9, I'm an just so we're on the same page. Okay, cool. So cool. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter. Um, love it. So you have three kids. I have zero. Yep. Well, I have uh, I have a half. I have a dog. He's in the other room, okay. not allowed to be in here during recording. Yeah. Um, Good for my you. Wife would call him, my wife would call him our son, but um, he is. I don't <laughs> care. Whatever. Yeah. I feel like I got this my isn't approved. Boy. My dog's my first. Boy. Yeah, hundred percent. He's he's my boy. But talk talk to me a little bit about that journey of going from one to two and two to three. Now you have three kids, and it seems like you're pretty disciplined and structured, and you have systems behind yeah. things. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm interested. So I didn't start getting disciplined like this level of discipline until I had had kids, and for me, like mm. kind of like the stressor of kids. And uh, I'm the type of person's like adversity hits. I kind of c- kick into gear better. Like um, mm-hmm. I know that you know a lot of people don't quote him anymore, but there was this old Mark Driscoll quote, you know, that talks about how like you know men when they are like trucks, you put weight in the back of them and they drive straighter. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. and so for me, you weigh me down, you weigh me down, and like I am a better person. Like men were created to bear responsibility and, and women were as well. I'm speaking specifically mm-hmm. my, my experience, uh, but we were created right. to bear responsibility. So, you know, no kids come along. It's like, I got all the time in the world. Like I can, we can stay up late and get things done. Mm-hmm. Well then, uh, we had our firstborn and you know, you can never prepare yourself from going zero to one. Like, you can read every book in the world, you know, you can be the most, like, <laughs> right. it's just going to be hard, you know, because your life is changing. Uh, now, we went from one to two, and one to two about broke us. <laughs> like, mm. like it was, it was, a, it was definitely a change. Now, my wife, she stays at home, and so mm-hmm. me, I am very, I'm, I work, she stays at home with the kids, and now we move from her being, you know, primary to me having a lot more responsibility. Uh, and that's just the right. way we've decided to do our, our thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll tell you this. So when I got to a super unhealthy place, I gained about 40 pounds. Uh, I got, when I started mm-hmm. ministry and we got married, I weighed 137 pounds. Well, about three or four years later, we had our first kid and I weighed 188 pounds. Uh, and I, wow. I know you can't tell, I am a very short guy. Uh, yeah. 188 pounds did not do me well. Um, and I got to a place where I was crazy unhealthy. Uh, I'd hurt my ankles, which demotivated me. I'd gotten out of the martial arts, um, and I had gotten really stressed. And not really necessarily because of anything that happened, just because of like me putting too much weight on my shoulders. And got to this place, dude, mm-hmm. where I was like, I would like get a Slack or an email that wouldn't be like what I needed, you know, or what I thought I needed, uh, or something that changed my plans. And uh, mm-hmm. like I'd be throwing up for twenty four to forty eight hours, type like. And looking back wow. on it, I was probably depressed. Um, I was mm-hmm. probably really depressed in that season, uh, and that was all kind of around the first kid. You know, like it was just a harder season for us. Um, mm-hmm. And so now we went two to three, 
two three is simple. Like, and we've had, you know, we have, we don't have any like family trauma or anything like that, mm-hmm. uh, and we haven't had any like health issues or anything like that. Uh, well, but two to three was simple, uh, and so, but for me, building out, honestly, I built out a lot of my rhythms and disciplines. Uh, like in the thick of like when COVID struck mm-hmm. and you know, we're all shut right. down. Like that was like, all right, I'm clicking it. I got to get this one or this thing's going to kill me. Um, and mm-hmm. like I, I say, I should probably shouldn't use those words, but like what I'm saying is like this, this like new lifestyle change was going to be really tough on me. Not necessarily like, yeah. um, just to make that clear. Um, uh, you know, mm-hmm. so, uh, for me, it's just those things kind of kicked me in the gear. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for sharing, man. I know that, um, we all have moments of not even just ministry. I think we, we over talk about ministry sometimes when it's, that's sometimes the easiest thing we can do is just yeah. go to a church building or get, go to coffee and listen to somebody else for a couple hours. Um, but going home to ourselves sometimes is the, the scariest thing. And so thanks for sharing your journey and yep. your testimony. I, I'm sure that you would even say that it's made you stronger and better and a better husband and leader and dad. Oh, absolutely. So, um, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. I want to I want to talk a little bit about your business. Uh, I think yeah. it's number one, super cool, um, and I know you're passionate about it. So, number one, talk mm-hmm. me through the journey of how kind of that the launch pad of like what what problem did you see in the system, and yeah. you said I could be a solution to this, and then talk me through the journey of starting that. Yeah. Okay. So this the reason why we started this. Um, so I started in ministry, you know, in youth ministry, like full-time ministry. Uh, we had about mm-hmm. 75 students, volunteers coming on Wednesday night. Well, within a year, we went from 75 to 300 plus. And, um, and so unbelievable growth. Uh, we were seeing mm-hmm. people getting saved every single night. Um, we had th- literally like 2,000 plus first-time guests show up in a year. Uh, and so wow. we had small youth ministry budget. It was me and one other person, uh, and we were just grinding and, and, but it was fun. Like we were having a great time, mm-hmm. uh, because like the Lord was blessing it. So we kind of get to this place and we kind of keep, kept hitting the 300. Well, well, we got to a place two years or so after that 300 mark where we were actually back at 72. Um, and so we, mm. We went up, and then we killed the ministry. Um, now, uh, there were still a lot of good things going on, but that summer, the Lord kind of took me through a process. And basically, like, I'm naturally like a more, like, programmatic, charismatic, on stage type leader. Um, and so, like, mm-hmm. creating the experience of Wednesday night was kind of just my natural strength. Um, and so right. um, we were able to get kids in the door, and we were able to run social media for the first time really and kids were really engaging with it like back in the early days of instagram where it's just pictures Mm -hmm. and uh and so it was all really really cool but we we crushed it and like we killed it and so that summer the lord really kind of took me on a journey of like listen you have created everything around a few things you've made the experience like the main thing and then you've also made you kind of the cornerstone of like mm. whether the energy for the ministry is going to be good. Um, and so like in seasons where I was high energy, we could grow and I could get on campuses and I could invite kids and we could have all this momentum going. But when I would get tired, because I would mm-hmm. a lot, and as I started having kids, I would just keep <laughs> getting more tired, um, like the energy was bad. And so for me, God kind of took me through. It was like, hey, you're not building this in a faithful way. Like, I, I do believe mm. healthy things grow. But when I say that, I mean healthy things bear fruit. But mm-hmm. we also know healthy things grow, but so do weeds. And I think we had a lot of weeds in there. And, and so, you know, when we, we, we really struggled. And so what we did is I said, all right, I want to make this to where this thing is decentralized from me my gift sets and my abilities and when you want to decentralize yourself the way you're going to do that is you're going to do it by building a system that's not built around you so for us and my partner patrick he was uh on staff with me at that that point in time as well for us we built 
our ministry, we started thinking, all right, we got to build this thing around systems. We got to get this decentralized from any one person. And we really got to put all the weight on the process and the system and the strategy for things. And so we actually were able to see that, you know, turn it, turn it around and grow that ministry uh, with, with, of course, you know, God's spirit moving. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't delegate the spiritual, right? I've heard Chris Hodges say that. And so of course the <laughs> yeah. spiritual was still there. Um, but, but like we were able to grow that to a 500 plus ministry to where we even on, mm. a, on one Wednesday night, you know, had a thousand people in the room. Uh, and so that was like our biggest night ever to where we were averaging over 500. And, uh, and wow. so for me, the reason why we started this, this, this company is because most youth pastors are great relationally. Most pastors are great preachers and most pastors are, are more naturally extroverted people. Okay. I am not naturally extroverted. Um, and so what I geek out on is the system and the process. And so what we say is we say, okay, uh, if you're going to have a strategic ministry, it needs to have simple, scalable systems. All right. And, and mm. you can have a great ministry, even if you're not a great preacher, if you have those things in place that are, that are facilitating that healthy growth. So we saw unhealthy growth, and we, want, we think everything should be growing, bearing fruit. And the only way that happens, you know, it's the trellis and the vine. We've got to build the trellis. So we're the trellis builders. Um, and we want to look at your system and your process and your strategy and help you build that trellis so that when you're doing the spiritual, when you're in charge of the vine, there's something for it to grow. See, strategy and systems are not going to ensure that your ministry grows, okay? But not having a strategy and not having a system ensures your ministry won't grow in a healthy way. So we just say, hey, mm. you can go to Orange, you can go to all these different places, Lifeway, and get all the theological resources you need. But well, welcome to the practical side of ministry when you come to SSM. And so uh, that's why we started. We get super pumped about it. Um, and so we offer coaching and courses and um, just, mm -hmm. just resources to, to help people um, to help people grow their ministry through simple strategies and scalable yeah. systems. Um, and so, again, trellis work. No, I love that so much. I mean, I, I went to Bible college, and in the middle of Bible college, we were helping launch a church, and it was like, wow, I don't think any of this actually is helping me. Like, it's helping me understand the Bible, and I can teach the Bible well. I can understand more. It may just made me a little bit legalistic, legalistic when there's like a 14-year-old talking about John 3.16, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like talking about, hey, dude, we're not, not going to talk about that in context, brother. Come on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's like – I got my master's, man. I went to undergraduate uh, for Bible mm -hmm. college, and, and honestly, I did most of it online. I went up to a semester – uh, and and did like in person classes and honestly the best thing I learned at my Bible college was Photoshop because I was so bored yeah. that I learned how to use Photoshop and Adobe Premiere <laughs> and right. uh, and then you know because I I already love like I love the Lord I love studying my Bible already I was listening to preachers mm -hmm. and reading books and I was like you know Bible Same. college was it was great but like I was right. really passionate about that <laughs> right yeah it was it was like a the whatever icing on the cake. But exactly. yeah, I mean, it's more practical and I, I hope that mm -hmm. anyone listening to this would, um, and I, I'm going to ask you soon, but reach out to you. And even if they, they don't have a dollar to spend, but just to give Landon a follow yep. to understand and learn from him. Like, um, I think it's imperative and I think it's imperative to have no matter what level of ministry you're in or not, maybe you're not even, you don't even believe in God to listen to this podcast to have a life coach or to have somebody that's yeah. not your boss to hold you accountable to whatever you want to grow in, I think mm -hmm. it's absolutely imperative. So, yeah. Landon, talk to me. The last two things. Number one, let us know how we can get engaged with you. Like, how can we find you? Maybe I'm again. A, a lot of this audience is youth pastors uh, or yeah. young adult pastors. So, how can they find you? Reach out to you. Maybe ask you a couple questions. Yeah. Um, and then also, why sh why should they? maybe yeah. partner with you in your resources or whatever you have. Yeah. Well, I'll answer your second question first. Mm -hmm. Every great athlete, superstar, or whoever's the top 1% of their field, okay, has a coach. And mm -hmm. often it's really hard to find a coach who doesn't know you or your church or have some type of experience with your church already. Because when that happens, bias takes place. Mm -hmm. And so what I always say is you need a coach 
who has no stake in your life, who doesn't want to hire you 10 years from now, who doesn't need you to mm-hmm. keep working at your job in order for their goals to be hit. You need a coach. And so I would just say, like, get a coach and get somebody to help you. Um, and so we would love to be those people who can help you and help coach you. Um, again, if you don't have a dollar to spend, we are hoping we're going to be able to add unbelievable amounts of value to you still. And so uh, you can mm-hmm. follow us. Uh, you can follow uh, if, if you if you want to look at all of the things that we offer. SimplyStrategicMinistry.com is our website. And uh, if you you know Simply Strategic Ministry on Instagram is where we kind of that's kind of our, our main home. Uh, that and on YouTube. And then uh, you know I, I do a lot of posting as well on my own personal. It's just mm-hmm. at Landon C Reynolds. Um, and uh, we we can help you help you get going. And uh, we, mm-hmm. we offer always a free strategy session or a free coaching session. Um, and so even if you, you don't have any money, you don't have a lot of resources, again, we can help you and then get you connected to other people and other like-minded people who you guys can just network together. And so uh, mm-hmm. we just, we just want to help come along, along, alongside of you guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're doing the spiritual. We're going to help you build the trellis as you are praying and asking God to move. Hmm, that's incredible. Well, uh, yeah, I just want to challenge whoever's for listening to this. Number one, I'll put the the link to your website below and all of Please. the platforms that will post this, and they'll be able to just click that and make it super easy for them. But I want to challenge you. Like, it's imp- it's imperative to to invest in your ministry, and it's usually the executive pastor. You got to go walk in his office and ask him. I guarantee you, they say yes if you ask them. Hey, I want to whatever hire a coach in this specific area. Again, it might not even be in ministry. The people, whoever you're, who, and if they're not, they don't want to invest in you, find a different job, but that's a whole different po- podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but they want to invest in you. They want to love on you. They want to help you grow and they can't do it themselves. So thank you so much, Landon. Um, is there any last word of encouragement for any listener uh, or maybe even for you and I on the podcast? I would just say that the difference in one degree or one percent is is what happens when you go from water to gas or or water to ice. And it might just take one little small change in your ministry or in your system to start growing and to start doing the things that you feel like God's called you to do. And so hmm. sometimes we can't see that. And so I just encourage you, get some fresh eyes in your ministry. And figure out what that one percent is, and uh, and see you know see where it leads. That's what I would say. So good, dude. Thank you so much for being on. I I learned a lot, and I hope that uh, all the listeners had their note pad t- taking notes. Um, I'm encouraged by you. I don't know if I'm gonna be uh, getting in kickboxing. I did box for I think like 12 years. My dad was a Bro, boxer. Golden Gloves boxer, so that's the kind of space I'm in. But I'm all about UFC. I don't know. I don't know your hot take. I know that UFC can be one way or another, but I'm I'm about it. Yeah. I, hey, my hot take is if you can fight, you can fight in the UFC, boxing, whatever. I like to watch fighters. So <laughs> yeah. So you watching the Jake Paul fight this Sunday or? Oh gosh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> that's my oh, hot take. No. My hot take is. <laughs> I don't like watching anything that Jake Paul's in. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. Dude, thank you seriously. Hey, heck yeah, dude. I appreciate you having me on, man.